everybody. My name is Sarah. It is December 21st. It is four days away from Christmas. Here we are in Western New York. The roads are starting to look a little bit grim. We had some snow the last couple weeks and instead of remaining white for a white Christmas, it looks like it's gonna be more of a brown Christmas. Take a look at this. So it's going to be a little bit warmer for the next couple days here in Western New York. The snow continues to melt. We may be in completely bare grass and pavement by Christmas. And it got me to thinking about, you know, getting outside to train. And I figured on that note, I would kind of talk about where my off-season training stands right now. And right now it's non-existent. I had every intention of beginning my training in the first week of December. Best laid plans didn't happen. I had a very, very severe sinus infection. My sinuses are notoriously bad, uh, very subject to inflammation and infection regardless of the strength of my immune system. It's just something I've been susceptible to since I was younger. Doctors have talked about possibility of surgery. They basically break your nose and do whatever the hell they need to do in there to uh, free up whatever poor, problematic area of the sinuses are causing that type of issue. But this sinus infection was was really bad. It was very severe. First of all, in the first week or so, just kind of feeling flu-like, unable to breathe. But a week ago on Thursday, I actually ended up in the hospital because the pain in the side of my face was so severe that I hit probably a nine or 10 on the pain scale. And long story short, what basically had happened was that everything was so clogged up into this area here that uh, all that disgustingness was uh, traveled down into my jaw area and actually pulled down there and created an abscess or a, basically a negative area or a void. Uh, and that area fills up with infection and that subsequently broke, which is really disgusting. I guess it's something that happens. Um, if you've ever heard of or had a dental abscess, it's the same concept, but instead of being localized under the tooth, it was localized uh, on the jawbone itself. Uh, it's actually still a little bit swollen here, and this is a little bit numb and tingly yet. Uh, I had some numbness and tingling in my entire face. My cheek four days ago was, no no lie, looked like I had like a, a couple of golf balls in there. It was extremely painful, it was extremely swollen. They gave me a face full of lidocaine, some antibiotics, and some painkillers. So I have been in absolutely no condition whatsoever for any type of training. Uh, luckily, I took this week and then I have the next week off of work. So I guess it's been an opportune time to kind of just lay back and recover and get better. Um, but my training has been pushed back. So, I mean, I took a couple months pretty much off the bike just because of, of work and life with every intention of uh, attacking this off season with some more vigor and ferocity in beginning in December and shit happens. So I'm looking for probably in the next couple of days to get a couple of rides in, get maybe some gym work in. Monday's gonna be tough with Christmas, but get back into the habit, start the routine a couple weeks late, but it shouldn't be completely detrimental if I put some focus and uh, you know attention into my training. But that's where I'm at with training right now. So hopefully, you know, later on today, I might hit up the gym or get on the bike, whatever the spirit moves me to do. I'm still a little fatigued, a little bit tired. So I'm not gonna push myself too far beyond. I am still on the course of antibiotics which don't make me feel that great, kind of bother my stomach. Um, so I'm going to do what I can do, but uh, that's kind of where I'm at with training. But I'm expecting a new package in the mail, so I want to kind of open up this cool box and review it for you guys because it's brand new to the market, and uh, I'm probably one of the first people to have my hands on one. So let's see where it is. Back to school. Okay. All right, glad to see that uh, Amazon is repurposing some of the September tape on December uh, 21st here. Well, let's open this guy up. And uh, we'll see how this thing rolls. All right, this is the brand new Echo Spot. This was just released a couple of days ago, uh, shipped out to those people with pre-orders and to those people who ordered the day of. But basically, the Echo Spot is, uh, if you've ever seen the Echo Show and the Echo Dot, it's basically like the bastard child of the two of them. It does have a screen on it. I think these retail for about $130, but it's just kind of a, um, another uh, Amazon Echo or Alexa device with a uh, screen on this. And this is something that I thought maybe I would put next to my bed, use it as my alarm clock. Uh, that way it would have a heads up display. I could check the weather real quick in the morning before I even get out of bed, you know, play music, things like that to go to sleep or wake up in the morning. 
Okay, so in my house, I have chosen to stick with the Amazon Echo or Alexa um, ecosystem, if you will. I got into the uh, smart home uh, type of uh, gadgetry back last year. I purchased the uh, original Echo speaker that I have up there on my mantle. I put an Echo Dot in my car. I did a video on that. I have an Echo Dot in the kitchen in case I want to kind of look up recipes, listen to a flash briefing, hook it up to a Bluetooth speaker and just listen to music while I'm doing dishes or I'm cooking. I've got a Sono speaker in my bedroom that's also Alexa enabled. Um, and it's just the ecosystem that I particularly prefer. It was a little bit more developed than the Google Home back when uh, I purchased the speakers. Um, I think at this point, I, I prefer the ecosystem A that I'm used to it, but I think it's a little bit more developed. Uh, the Google uh, ecosystem is a little bit better in terms of if I wanna ask an obscure question and it looks up something on the internet, it has all of Google to its uh, disposal. It can look up pretty much anything. So it might be a little smarter in that regard, but in terms of its skills and development and linking with my Amazon, Amazon account, which I use very heavily, the Echo, uh, the speakers, the Echo Dots, and now the Echo Spot has, uh, it, it feeds a little bit more into what I need. So that's kind of just a little backstory of, of why I'm kind of into this technology. But uh, let's kind of open this up and see what's inside. So usually packaged pretty well. I think that they do a nice job of uh, packaging their products well in, uh, in an aesthetically pleasing manner, but not in a costly manner. Um, that's kind of my criticism of, of some devices where you're paying a lot for a device, so you expect it to be packaged well, but I'd rather pay a little bit less and have it in a more simple cardboard box. Like if you look at uh, Amazon's um, like their tablets and even the Echo Dot and the Echo, they come in a very simple box, which is fine because I'd rather pay, you know, 10% or 15% less and have less packaging that I'm just gonna go, you know, stow away somewhere than pay more and have this beautiful box. Um, so at any rate, inside, there's your box. I'm gonna set that aside. And it's a very simple system here. As with all of their other uh, pieces of tech, you get uh, a little bit of a quick setup guide. Not much in terms of an instruction manual, just basically uh, the button layout. You get the Echo Spot itself, which kind of sits like this. I believe that there's an ancillary stand that you can buy for it, but I don't particularly see the need for me as, uh, individually, but it looks like that might be a notch for that particular stand. And then you have the power adapter. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in. Uh, looks like the power adapter is meant for strictly a wall plug. This is not something that you can uh, hook up via USB. Um, to be expected considering the power that it probably takes to run this particular screen um, is not a, a low voltage. So let me get this plugged in and we'll check it out. All right, so we'll get this plugged in here. Looks like on the back, they're not labeled here. I think it's labeled on the quick guide, but you've got your um, AC input and then you've got your 3.5 millimeter output in case you want to hook that up to a pair of speakers. So we'll go ahead and plug that in now and I will take off this uh, protective tape here. And you can see that this is just booting up. up. So, um, you know, relatively nice screen so far kind of see if you can see that on the uh, screen but we'll let this guy boot up and we'll have to pair this with my uh, Amazon Alexa account through my phone so you can hear that's kind of booting up here but pairing it up with the phone is really easy especially if Hello. I've already done Your it the Echo first time Spot is ready for setup so let me uh, go ahead looks like we got a nice touch screen here English United States uh, we'll hook up to my internet here and I'll, uh, this isn't particularly fun, but let me go ahead and get all my uh, internet stuff uh, hooked up. So right now it's gonna go through a software update real quick. It's gonna restart a couple times, it's updating. I find it interesting that a brand new device, it's literally just been released to the public two days ago and just shipped out, um, needs a software update, but isn't that the nature of the beast? Every time we buy something and get it out of the box, it seems like it immediately needs a firmware update or a software update. All right, it's all updated here. It's saying introducing the Echo Spot. Introducing Amazon Echo Spot. Oh boy. A stylish, compact Echo with a screen that's designed to fit anywhere. All right, 
So super easy setup. I think this is a great addition to my uh, Echo uh, system here. Basically, the fact that I purchased this on Amazon, I already linked the serial number right to my Amazon account. It made setup very seamless. I put in my Wi-Fi password. I did a quick update. It showed me a little bit of a tutorial video. It's not completely unlike the uh, original tutorial video I got to watch when I set up my original Echo. Just gives you a quick um, overview of what the uh, just Amazon Alexa system is capable of doing. So this spot, I think, for me, is the perfect blend between the uh, st uh, standard Echo and then the Echo Show, which is something that's interesting, but for me, it's just a little impractical. I think it's a $200 device. It's a tablet-sized screen. Uh, I feel like, for me, if I was going to watch a video or command to, uh, to watch something and I wanted to view it on a big enough screen, I could probably just use my tablet, right, or my cell phone. I don't really see the need for a standalone uh, Amazon Alexa base device just to have a bigger screen. It might be neat for something like if you were gonna put it in your kitchen, if you wanted to look up recipes a lot, something on demand. But again, for me, the practicality of spending $200 on something like that versus my cell phone or my tablet, at this point, it seemed a little bit unnecessary. But the interesting part about this was it kind of integrated in a less expensive manner, being able to have the viewable screen, which allows you to interface with your smart devices, specifically with respect to security. So a neat in, uh, option is to be able to to remotely watch any of the cameras that you have linked to your Amazon system. So for example, Alexa, show me the front door. Okay. So she's gonna go ahead and she's gonna link to my Ring doorbell, which is only gonna take a few seconds, and she's gonna show me what's going on at my front door. This isn't just for my uh, any front door camera, but if you have a camera in the baby's room, in the, the parking lot, uh, at your garage, at the back door, the side door, you're able to see that. And at any point in time, if I'm unsure what's going on, if I hear a suspicious noise, I'm laying in bed, I can turn to this thing and I can tell her to show me the front door. And then I can very quickly end the, uh, the connection by either swiping down and hitting the home button or just saying Alexa home. So I think that's kind of a neat uh, concept there. You got a very nice vibrant screen. You can change the clocks. Um, I have it set to a digital clock because when you're waking up in the morning, you're not looking to try to read an analog clock. You got nice digital, it tells you exactly what time it is. Scrolls through, shows you the weather and shows you your notifications or in this particular case, things to try because I have no active notifications. But that's kind of a neat option there. Uh, it's got a very intuitive design. You swipe down from the top, very much like most Android phones or tablets. Uh, and you've got your home button. You can turn your night mode on and off, which basically dims the screen. And then you've got your settings. So you can pair it with Bluetooth speaker if you so desire. I haven't done anything like that yet. It is something that I might uh, consider doing. Uh, you set it up with your Wi-Fi already done. Home and clock, you can pick one of six different analog or digital clocks, which is neat. Here's your home card preferences. So this is just kind of the uh, main display. I have it rotating through one time. So it starts with the clock, rotates through to uh, the, basically the temperature outside to my notifications and back and freezes on the clock. You can have it rotate continuously. You can turn all these different cards on or off, so you can have a, a more on your screen or less on your screen. I figured those three things were pretty much enough. And then night mode, which dims your screen, but instead of on command like you had seen when you swipe down from the top, uh, you're actually able to schedule it. So right now I have it set from 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. and I can change those times as I so desire, where it's just gonna kind of dim and be a little less distracting if it's in a dark room and you have a hard time uh, sleeping with any kind of ambient light. Back uh, to the main menu, you can go back to your display. Um, you can change it to a photo slideshow if that's what you want on there. Change the brightness. Adaptive brightness basically just changes uh, with the ambient light in the room. It'll show you something uh, darker or brighter depending on the needs uh, for the screen at that time. Uh, sound. Uh, you can change your volume for your particular sounds. So you can turn your, your media volume up or down. You can turn your alarm notification volume up and down. They have an option for an ascending alarm, which is basically one of those things that kind of gradually wakes you up. It's very common in most cell phone alarms these days as well. Uh, you can change your sounds. They've got a bunch of goofy sounds built in there. Right, time to wake up. Good morning. How do you know it's morning? So it's got a well, bunch of different the... stuff in there, a bunch of some talking stuff, some sounds, some basic stuff. You can set your uh, notifications to different sounds as well. Um, this one's just kind of default or none. Very simple sound for notification. 
and then um, you can kind of repeat those sounds if needed. Uh, I do not have them set to uh, repeat. You can set up do not disturb mode. This is something in terms of um, being able to make phone calls. That is a neat feature that uh, has just been recently added to the Echo devices. You are able to make a free phone call to pretty much anybody in the world using the Echo devices. You can actually call somebody's phone from these devices. I have not tried to do that yet, but it's definitely a neat concept. We're kind of veering away from the need for having landlines and you can use this right here as kind of a speakerphone. Um, you can actually use this to make a video call to somebody if you so desire, calling grandma, calling the kids, whatever you need to do there. So that's kind of neat. Um, you've got your device option. Uh, you can change your device names. So the interesting thing about naming your devices is that you uh, interface with your Echo devices as an entire ecosystem. Uh, they all pair together. They play well with one another. So to give you an example, I can tell my Echo Spot to actually play music through my living room. So if I'm in my bedroom and I wanna play something out here in the living room as I walk in here, I can go ahead and command it from a different room in the house. So for example, Alexa, play songs by Sia on living room. Shuffling songs by Sia on Living Room. So now it's playing it on my Living Room Echo, even though I command it from a different uh, Echo entirely. Alexa, stop. So basically got her to stop playback. So just kind of continuing to work through uh, the menu here back in the device options. Um, you've got, you could pick your language, your wake words. So this is interesting for um, the junkies for uh, Star Trek, you can actually name it computer if you want, or you can call it Amazon or Echo. So you've got one of four command words right now. You cannot customize your command word. That's not to say that that's not coming in the future, but it's just an interesting option to change it to one of those four things. You can change your date and time, uh, your temperature and distance uh, units. So here in the US, we use Fahrenheit and miles, so I'll leave it set to that. You can pair a remote, a, a gadget, check it for software updates. And this is a great option. A lot of the concerns that I've been seeing, uh, seeing and a concern for myself is the camera. There is a camera right here up on the top of that and it's used for making video calls. Um, and right now you can hit this button on top and turn off your microphone and camera at any point in time. So it can't hear you and I can say Alexa, Alexa, Alexa. She doesn't hear me, she doesn't respond um, and the camera's not on. But there actually is a way to turn the camera completely off. I have no use for the camera whatsoever. I don't intend at this point in time to make any video calls. So I went ahead and I turned that right off. Uh, you can have the extra measure of security and go ahead and kind of cover that camera up with the uh, piece of electrical tape like people have done with their laptops for years. Um, I feel like the Amazon framework is probably pretty pretty safe with respect to hacking, but you never know, you know what happens or who can get into your... Uh, you know, your Wi-Fi system, things are not impervious. So it's just a little extra measure of control for those people who do not like the camera on there. It's a neat feature to have added to have the camera because I think the idea of making a video call to somebody else's Echo device is definitely a nice option to have, but the option to turn off that camera I think is gonna be important to a lot of people, myself included. Uh, you can reset the factory defaults. Your serial number is available right there if needed. Uh, and then you've got some pretty simple settings down here, restricting access. Um, you can kind of block searches for particular photos and movie trailers if you have uh, children in the house uh, because as soon as they hear these things, if you've ever had children around these things, they just love playing with Alexa. So being able to restrict access to things that may be inappropriate, especially visually, um, that's an interesting uh, feature to have on here. Uh, there's just a list of things to try for people new to the spot, you know, things that they can show you. Um, a little bit more visual than the uh, previous iterations of the Echo. Some help, accessibility, legal and compliance, just some basics. So uh, it's a neat little system. I think it's something that's gonna work very well in the background. I can have it on my desk or I can put it in my bedroom. I intend to put it in my bedroom uh, as uh, my new alarm clock. We'll see how that type works. I will continue to use my cell phone as well as a backup alarm. But I think that that's kind of a neat little system. I think I'm gonna enjoy using it with the rest of my uh, Alexa and smart home ecosystem that I have in the house. She's trying to talk to me right now. Sorry, Alexa, I don't want to talk to you. Um, but at any rate, I think this is going to be a cool little device. Um, very intuitive. It's it's set up very well. Uh, I, I really like the screen. I like the uh, fact that uh, it's already capable of doing all the things that I'm used to having Alexa do. And then it's got the uh, added option of just kind of showing me the screen. Alexa, show me the weather. Here is the weather in Hamburg. So just kind of showing me the weather. I think that that's kind of a neat option. Or, uh, you know, Alexa, show me movie trailers. To watch a trailer, 
Include the movie's name, like play the trailer for Wonder Woman. Okay. Alexa, play the trailer for Wonder Woman. Diana. So it's small, but that is, is from here, I don't know if you can see. tell, that is a nice picture. I promise to uh, be again, careful. tiny, it, it's just something at your bedside, just here, but Diana. it's a very nice screen, very good Don't resolution for what it is, uh, decent amount of sound, especially, especially if I Diana. set it down. Alexa, stop. So it's a very capable little device. It's 130 bucks. I figured I'd pick it up and give it a try on pre-order, so I don't think I'm disappointed with that. So I'm going to go ahead and set that up in my bedroom and just have yet another Alexa device spying on me in my house. All right, I've opted to not be a big pussy and actually get my ass on the bike for a nice long ride. So it looks like we're on the London route here today. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit the PRL half, try to finish that up, 42.9 miles, uh, 3,291 feet of climbing. This is not gonna end well, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to uh, complete that ride, however long it might take, hopefully somewhere in the realm of maybe three hours. We'll see how I fare on that one. Okay, just did a quick hour and 15 minutes on the bike. Didn't end up doing the full two hours I intended. A, I was getting a little bit on the board side. Legs didn't feel too bad, didn't feel great, but they didn't feel horrendous. I could have kept going, but I actually kind of decided while I was on the bike that I wanted to go hit up the gym and get a strength session in because I figured since it's been a while since I've been at the gym, I'm gonna hit that second and third day soreness. And I figured I'd get that out of the way now so that that soreness is gonna kick in right around Christmas Eve, Christmas day, where I may not have time to do much more than a quick hour long spin out on the bike and that way I'm not losing any training time. So I'm going to get changed real quick, head over to the gym, do some uh, dreaded strength work over there uh, and get uh, day one of winter training in the books. couple of hours at the gym done, surrounded with a little of this stuff. So I did a quick 90 minutes worth of strength work, focused mostly on the legs and the core area. Um, did a, a little bit of cardio to kind of cool down and spin out the legs after it was done. And then I ended up with about 20 minutes in the sauna, um, just to kind of relax clear out the shit in my face and uh, relax the muscles. A little bit of uh, back pain in the last couple days that was alleviated by being in that nice hot box. So uh, there are a number of benefits to being in the sauna. I think maybe tomorrow or the next day I want to go over some of those health benefits because I think it's something that's underutilized by a lot of athletes and just people in general who want to be fitness and health aware. Um, 
and I'm not going to include uh, quick weight cutting for uh, the dehydration end of the spectrum but there are a number of benefits of being in the sauna and I enjoyed my time in there but I'm gonna get myself home before the snow starts coming down a little harder because in this area it goes from about zero to a hundred in no time flat All right, gonna get myself in the shower and call it a night. So that's gonna be the end of today's vlog. Hope you like the little spot about the echo spot. Um, gonna be a neat little toy to play with. I'm gonna use the alarm function tomorrow morning, see how that goes for me. I'm not gonna really know how to use the damn thing. I think I'm gonna have to say, Alexa, shut the hell up, because there's, I don't know if you just hit the button on the top to snooze the damn thing or what, but. At any rate, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you want more videos. Let me know of any suggestions you have in the comment section down below. But again, thank you so much for watching. Drive safe if you're in a snowy area like me, and I will see you in the next one.